I was born in 1941 in Topeka at 2006 Topeka Avenue. Oh, okay. I was born at home. <laughs> you were born at home? Yes. Awesome. Um, and your parents' name? Uh, Sybil Shaw Lee and uh, Elmer Lee. Okay, great. Um, and what did you do as a career, or are you still active in a career? Well, I. When I left, I'm visually impaired, so when I left high school, um, they were doing, well, the, the last year they did tests, you could go in and the employment office to see what you're best suited for, and I thought maybe I would, you know, go to Washburn, but um, the man talked me into uh, checking with the services for the blind. Um, they were having a program in which they were training people in, in uh, typing and using the dictaphone machine. Of course, they don't use those anymore, I guess. But uh, And so I got involved with that. But dictaphone typing was not for me because I found myself looking at times trying to see, you know, oh, did I make a mistake or whatever. And I could never get my speed up. I passed some of the state test, you had to take a state test uh, for clerk typing. Mm -hmm. And I worked a little bit uh, at the state office building in a, a department where I was typing up envelopes that went out to schools. But I was really very slow at that, so that was not for me. Okay. <laughs> and so I, uh, after that, I just did various jobs and I did uh, a, a housework for a long time. And I went to visit my friend Mona in New York. And um, I met some of her friends. Uh, she had graduated from KU and was working there uh, as a nurse. And she was in a, an infection de uh, control department at a, you know, a hospital there. So, I, so one of her friends, I was asking about Head Start. It had, hadn't been going that long. And she was a teacher in Head Start. And I was telling her that I was going to go back. They wanted to see about training me for some other machines. And she said, I think you would like to be with people. Mm -hmm. And she said, I think you should go back and apply for Head Start, you know, as a pair. And that was fall. And I did go back and do that. And that spring, I was hired for the summer. They had a lot of summer programs going then, and we had a pretty big one in Topeka with, um, they had three area supervisors, and I um, got a job as a pair with Flossie Holland, and she had been my fifth grade teacher at Monroe, so I returned to Monroe for that summer as a pair. <laughs> Oh, awesome. yes, uh, uh -huh. and so I uh, we another program came to Topeka called Follow Through, in which they were working uh, to to see how they could improve the education for uh, children they felt like were being left out, and each teacher would have a para. So I got a job that fall as a para, and also I, you were allowed to go to school. They had money if you wanted to go and you could go into any area. Well, I took some courses uh, so I would understand more what the teacher was doing, but I had an advisor at Washburn who talked me into finishing and he planned my uh, classes for me. Uh, I didn't realize that the building I worked in for a long time, his wife worked in that building and she had been telling him about me. Oh. And so he thought I shouldn't. I told him with well, being visually impaired I would never, you know, probably get a job teaching. And uh, in fact, when I took the dictaphone typing, uh, the um, counselor, she, with the services of the blind, she was really sold on that after doing the testing and she said, well, you, she had told me, well, you seem to be like working with people and children, but she said, you know, being black and having a visual problem, you will probably never be able to get a job. And I said, oh yeah, I know that, you know. Mm -hmm. So then I'm faced again with the uh, advisor at Washburn. He said, oh, don't worry about that, just finish. So I did finish and it happened, the program I was working in follow through, they had a teacher in our building that wanted to leave in April. She did, uh, she wanted to go to Mexico to teach and they needed her then. So I was able to get her job. Okay. And then the next year follow through was phased out, but they kept the teachers in Paris and placed them in various places. So I, that's how I started teaching. So I ended up in the same building. Okay, so you were a uh, uh, preschool teacher for how many years? Um, or, or was it preschool? Oh, after when I started that fall, it was 
kindergarten and uh, each year they added another year until we got to third grade. So I, uh, I worked as a para from kindergarten to third grade, but then when I started teaching, I was teaching first grade. Okay. Now I taught second grade one year and then after that I taught first grade every year. And so how long did your teaching career uh, See, I as 11 years as a para and 23 as a teacher because I took classes at night until the last year I had to take some I had to take off from work and take a, a, a couple things that were only offered in the day. Mm -hmm. So I was able to um, um, finish and um, it was over 11 years while I was working as a pair that I did the classes. I took some in the summer when uh, sometimes we had summer money. Mm -hmm. And then there was a couple semesters we didn't have the money for school and uh, uh, by then, uh, Services of Blind had checked back in with me and um, their state rehabilitation service they had. And uh, the particular counselor found out that I was working and had been going to school. And I was able to get two semesters through the Services of Blind. They paid for two semesters. Oh, that's and so I got those two semesters that the uh, program didn't have the money. But most of the time, the program had the money for the books and the tuition.